On Friday night, I had the chance to go to the climbing gym with my brother John and son Harry. Early on, Harry jumped on Black Death, a V10 so brutal it had literally killed a number of other climbers who had fallen off in exhaustion and whose bodies had to be scraped off the padding, placed on a cart, and wheeled away. Do you see anybody else standing in line for this one? No way. And as Harry started climbing, there was this somber, deathly silence. Like, what's going to happen to him? Will he be the next to fall prey to the Black Death? Believe me when I tell you that there were a bunch of gawkers, and the people you see in the background in this clip, if they look disinterested, it's only because the circumstances were so sobering they didn't want to watch. Of course, Harry made it look kind of easy. He has a tendency to do that. And that's good for him, but bad for others, because after he succeeded, there were these other people who tried, but they also fell off in exhaustion, and their bodies had to be carted away, which was super sad. Now, I'm no city slicker. Fact is, I live more than 500 miles away from this particular climbing facility, so I don't get to go very often. My brother John got me in with a guest pass. John, that was awesome. And I was psyched out of my mind. Early on, I homed in on Blood and Guts, a choice line busting out of the steepest overhang in the whole place, running more or less parallel to Black Death. Blood and Guts was also the scene of significant carnage and had to be taken very seriously. Part of the problem was the rating. This was a so-called V5, but in my opinion, much closer to V9, and don't be deceived, those holds may look decent, but they were so crappy, I was personally shocked. John insisted on warming up on a V2 called Tender Kernels of Sweet Corn. I thought that was sort of a goofy name, but hey, I'm not running the place. There were these three teenage kids who had been working the problem hard, and then John stepped up and skipped the biggest jug right in the middle, as if to say, Try that, you little punks. And not only did he successfully make it to the top, he then started to down campus. And that's when these kids lost composure and started to cry. Then John went directly to blood and guts, which I had been working hard. And as he climbed, he just kept saying, Man, this is really fun. These holds are awesome. Oh, wow. Can you believe this in-cut jug? And this one? And this one? Hey Rob, how's work going? You know, I think it's awesome that you were able to come here and, and join us at the gym because you seem awfully stressed out. And this is a good way to wind down. This is a good way to get a little bit of exercise and, and, and take your mind off the stressors of work. Oh hey, what do you think I should do here? Oh never mind, I think I got it worked out. At your house, how's that painting project coming along? Oh hey man. These are awesome holds. And what a choice place for a heel hook. Oh, I like this a lot. And not only did he successfully make it to the top on his very first try, he then started to down campus. And when he got back on the ground, he turned to me and said, V5, right? That seems pretty fair. And that's when I lost composure and started to cry. Next, Harry got on this problem called the Mask of the Red Death, and it was at this point that I began to ask myself, who's naming these things? Black Death? Blood and Guts? The Mask of the Red Death? How macabre! Did this person have a really disturbed childhood or something? Are these names supposed to be inviting? I mean, you might as well title these climbs College Campus Venereal Disease or Grotesquely Botched Amputation. Suddenly, tender kernels of sweet corn was starting to sound pretty damn good. Anyway, Harry, or should I say Prince Prospero, was in good form to the very last precision stab, but then the Red Death got him! Ah! Next, Black Flag. I don't know whether Black Flag was named as a tribute to the punk rock band or the insecticide. Or maybe it was because all the holds were black and there was a lot of flagging involved. Whatever the reason. Suffice it to say that when I got to the top, the very last move, I wilted and fell like a poisoned roach. My brother John went next, and he made it look easy. When he got back on the ground, he tried to speak kind and encouraging words, 
but there were undeniable truths floating through the air and circling through my mind. You're younger, I'm older. You're strong, I'm weak. Your La Sportiva theories are way cooler than my La Sportiva Cobras. You're the best, I'm the worst. You're very good looking, I'm not attractive. Rome, if you want to, must have been named after the song by the B-52s. And how appropriate, because the problem had Harry roaming all over the freaking world. Do you ever think it's weird how we yield ourselves to the authority of these root setters, fall prey to their demented games of Simon Says? What if they're watching us by surveillance camera, laughing and giving each other high fives as they get us to do all kinds of ridiculous moves? But note that the problem was called Rome if you want to. When back on the ground, Harry said that in going dot to dot, he wasn't mindlessly conforming, he was choosing to roam. If the root setters were secretly being entertained by any problem above all others, it had to be Nitro Circus. It was hard to imagine how this one could have been any more ridiculous except with roller skates and a jet pack. Back to Rome if you want to. Maybe there's a subtle hint there that we don't have to just compulsively yield ourselves to the dictates of the root setters. Perhaps it's time to take back some power, scream, screw this, and grab a jug or two in the middle of a sequence. I couldn't persuade Harry to do that, though. He said something about rising to the challenge, proving that no sequence, regardless of its absurdity, could phase him. And son, I like that. I respect that. Okay, this one with John was called Frog Eyes. There were frog eyes bulging out all over the place. Frog eyes, frog eyes, frog eyes. And of course, they were all green like a frog. And you kind of had to jump like a frog. Now, you may be skeptical when I say this because I think we all understand that climbing holds are made out of polyurethane. But I'm telling you, all those green frog eyes sort of smelled like a frog. If Nitro Circus was a crazy sequence which had been created purposefully, Maelstrom looked and seemed like modern art, like someone had chosen a bunch of holds at random and then flung them onto the wall, quite possibly while blindfolded. So the sequence which resulted was bizarre, yet, as chance would have it, way cool, and Harry raved about this one as much as any. Now check out the hold on the underside of the volume. When modern artists are in charge, holds like that get used in really interesting ways. Bravo, modern artist. All right, we're almost to the end if you're starting to get bored. I don't want to dredge up bad memories for anybody, but if you were like me, then unlike the kids whose moms packed Cheetos into their sack lunches, you got carrot sticks. Well, now that I'm in my 50s, I appreciate my mom, against whom I shall file no lawsuit for ruining my life by loading me up with Cheetos and Ding Dongs and Twinkies and Funyuns and that kind of crap. Truly, this Boulder problem stands as a tribute to carrot sticks, and I dare say that those who did not eat their carrot sticks are not going to make it to the top, because these are carrot sticks of brutality, yo. Blue Times 2 must have been set by somebody with aspirations to be in a marching band because the crux was just like somebody smashing a couple of big brass cymbals together. After that, the problem was almost boring, going up a brief distance to this sloper that looked like the nose of a frost giant or something. I didn't do the problem because I've never really aspired to be in a marching band. All right, now for a few outtakes at the very end. And you know what I think the takeaway here is? You fall cool. I fall dorky.